praise and adoration, we raise our palms to the Lord. Amen. Welcome to Children of Mormons for Palm Sunday. Let's just start with the Bible study. question. So, so what is today? Sunday, right? So today is a very special Sunday. So what is it? Swim. Ah, it's Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday. So uh, do you know the, what Palm Sunday is? So Palm Sunday, Christians celebrate the entry of Jesus to the Jerusalem. Entering to Jerusalem. Okay, let me show you. Who is it? Boris. Who is it? The Jesus. What is it? Boris? Boris? 
इस टॉम की <laughs> Jesus was answering to Jerusalem. So what is it? It's a palm branch. Palm branch. Okay. So people pray the Lord so with shaking palm branches. Uh, they shouted Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. So do you know what it means? Hosanna means? Hosanna means save us now. Save us now. Okay. So today we have to remember, we have to keep in mind two things. First thing, Palm Sunday, on Palm Sunday, we have to celebrate Jesus entering to Jerusalem. The second thing is the Hosanna's meaning. So what is Hosanna means? Save us now. Save us now. Jesus entered to Jerusalem to save us. Jesus is the savior of the world. We have to celebrate this very much important meaning of Palm Sunday. Okay? Palm Sunday, we have to celebrate entering of Jesus to Jerusalem. Second, we have to keep in mind that Jesus is our savior of the world. Okay? All right, let us pray. Thank you, God. We are celebrating Palm Sunday. Please help us. Keep in mind that Jesus is our savior. Please help us. We decide to follow Jesus. Thank you, God. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. Let's run to the other side. Today's scripture comes to us from John chapter 12, verses 12 through 27. And it reads, the next day, the great crowd that had come for the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him. They shouted, Hosanna, blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord, blessings on the king of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, just as it is written. Do not, don't be afraid, daughter of Zion. Look, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's pole. His disciples didn't understand these things at first. After he was glorified, they remembered that these things had been written about him and that they had done these things to him. The crowd who had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him out from the dead were testifying about him. That's why the crowd came to meet him. Because they had heard about his, this miraculous sign that he had done. Therefore the Pharisees said to each other, see, you have accomplished nothing. Look, the whole world is following you. Some Greeks were among those who had come up to worship at the festival. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and made a request. Sir, we want to see Jesus. Philip told Andrew, and Andrew and Philip told Jesus. Jesus replied, the time has come for the human one to be glorified. I assure you that unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it can only be a single seed. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their lives will lose them, and those who hate their lives in this world will keep them forever. Whoever serves me must follow me. Wherever I am, there my servant will also be. My father will honor whoever serves me. Now I am deeply troubled. What should I say? Father, save me from this time? No, for this is the reason I have come to this time. 
Nuestro texto de hoy viene del Evangelio de Juan, capítulo 12, versículos del 12 al 27. Y la palabra de Dios dice, Al día siguiente, cuando la gran multitud que había venido a la fiesta, oyó que Jesús venía a Jerusalén, tomaron hojas de las palmas y salieron a recibir a Jesús. Y gritaron, Osana, bendito el que viene en el nombre del Señor, el Rey de Israel. Jesús, hallando un asnillo, se montó en él, como está escrito, no temas ni la acción, he aquí tu rey viene montado en un pollino de asno. Sus discípulos no entendieron esto al principio, pero después, cuando Jesús fue glorificado, entonces se acordaron de que esto se había escrito de él y, que lo, y de que le habían hecho estas cosas. Y así la multitud que estaba con Jesús cuando llamó a Lázaro del sepulcro y lo resucitó de entre los muertos, daba testimonio de él. Por eso la multitud fue también a recibir a Jesús, porque habían oído que él había hecho esta señal. Entonces los fariseos se decían unos a otros, ¿ven que ustedes no consiguen nada? Miren, todo el mundo se ha ido tras de él. Había unos griegos entre los que subían a adorar en la fiesta. Estos fueron a Felipe, que era de Bethsaida, de Galilea, y le rogaron, Señor, queremos ver a Jesús. Felipe fue y se lo dijo a Andrés. Andrés y Felipe fueron y se lo dijeron a Jesús. Jesús le respondió, ha llegado la hora para que el Hijo del Hombre sea glorificado. En verdad les digo que si el grano de trigo no cae en tierra y muere, se queda solo, pero si muere, produce mucho fruto. El que ama su vida la pierde, y el que aborrece su vida en este mundo, la conservará para vida eterna. Si alguien me sirve, que me siga, y donde yo estoy, allí también estará mi servidor. Si alguien me sirve, el Padre lo honrará. Ahora mi alma se ha angustiado. ¿Y qué diré, Padre, sálvame de esta hora? Pero para esto he llegado a esta hora. Prepare our minds and hearts for what we have us received today, O Lord. And that the meditations of my heart and the words of my tongue be found acceptable to you. Amen. This Sunday, we flash back, if you will, to the triumphant entry of Jesus into Jerusalem, which we as Christians around the world celebrate with jubilant processions and parades, with joyful music, and in celebration and remembrance of the Holy One, Jesus of Nazareth, who rode on a humble young donkey and forever changed the world as we know it. Este Domingo de Ramos, hacemos un flashback o por decir, retrocedemos un poco en la historia de Jesús a su entrada triunfal en Jerusalén. Hoy es un día que para muchos creyentes en diversas partes del mundo nos unimos a celebrar y a conmemorar con gozo y con alegría, con ramos y con procesiones, con desfiles y con marchas que Jesús, el Hijo ungido y amado de Dios, entró a la ciudad de Jerusalén sobre un humilde polino y cambió el mundo para siempre. Pero ¿cómo es que si la semana pasada vimos cómo ya regresaron a Jesús que ahora estamos escuchando sobre su entrada en paz? Last week we read about how Jesus was arrested in the garden and now we're back at the triumphant entry. Was this before planning? On this Sunday, which is both Palm Sunday and Passion Sunday, we are able to see how even as we flash back, Jesus is aware of just what it is that awaits him as he makes his journey into Jerusalem. En este pasaje que detalla su entrada a esta ciudad, vemos como aún en medio de todo esto que está sucediendo, Jesús sabe lo que le espera. Jesús reconoce que su hora ha llegado. Y como vimos la semana pasada, toma decisiones y responde de maneras que demuestran qué tan fija estaba su mirada en el plan que 
que Dios me dio. Para él, el compartir el amor poderoso de Dios a todos era su mayor enfoque. Él entendió que su ministerio causaría escándalo y que le traería peligro a su vida. Y se mantuvo tan conectado a Dios que todo lo que hizo en todo momento fue para demostrarle al mundo entero que el amor puede cambiar todo. Unlike John, the synoptic gospels spend a great deal of time setting up this triumphant entrance with the subplots of the disciples being sent to find a suitable animal for Jesus to make his way into the city. And once he finally does make his entrance, we see that in Luke and in Matthew, Jesus heads to the temple after his procession into Jerusalem. Once he's there, we see that passage where he proceeds to clear out the temple of the money changers and the merchants who had taken advantage of the people and turned that sacred space into a den of robbers, as we read in Luke chapter 19, verse 46, and Matthew 21, verse 13. And then in Mark, after Jesus is cheered on by crowds who lay out their cloaks as he enters, he again heads to the temple, except this time it is late. And after he surveys the sea, he departs with the 12 to Bethany. And so it is only in John that we see and we're able to read of Jesus directly interacting with those that have come to see him. En los otros evangelios vemos como antes de que Jesús entre a Jerusalén, hay instrucciones de parte de Jesús a los discípulos. Los manda a que lo encuentren en Colino, ese burrito para que él cruzara para entrar. Y luego de ser adorado por las multitudes, vemos como en Lucas y en Mateo, Jesús termina su jornada en el templo. Es ahí cuando vemos que echa fuera a todos los que vendían y compraban y que cambiaban el dinero en el templo. Marcos luego nos cuenta que después de entrar a Jerusalén, Jesús pasa al templo y después de que se hace tarde, decide salir con los doce a Betania. Así que solamente en el Evangelio de Juan es que vemos a un Jesús que no solamente entra a la ciudad, sino que también tiene palabras y comparte con aquellos que vinieron a verlo y querían escuchar de él. Es solamente aquí en que vemos que Jesús empieza a contarles de lo que está por venir. Y cuando grupos de personas como los ciegos que vinieron específicamente para ver y hablar con Jesús, vienen y se acercan, vemos solamente en este pasaje que Jesús toma el tiempo para hablar con ellos y compartir la magnitud de lo que estaba por venir. Es Juan quien nos detalla que entre esa multitud que vino a verlo, se encontraban aquellos que vieron cómo Jesús levantó a Lázaro de entre los muertos, y que también habían aquellos que habían escuchado sobre este milagro. También habían personas que habían visto otras obras, personas que habían comenzado a seguir a Jesús, pero también aquellos que se oponían a Jesús. Dentro de esta multitud, había personas que se sentían amenazadas por el movimiento de Jesús y que temían lo que sucedería si más y más gente se unían a su ministerio y a su movimiento. It is the writer of John who tells us of how these crowds that had come to meet Jesus with palms consisted of those that had, had seen Jesus raise Lazarus from the dead, those that had heard others speak of what they had seen happen that day. It also included people who had begun to believe with him, who had seen him perform other signs and other miracles. And yet also in that crowd, there were also those who opposed him. This crowd also had within it those that were threatened by his ministry and who worried about what it might mean for more and more people to follow this man. And it is also in John that we see that it is palms that are waved as the crowd chants, Osana, Osana. For you see, palms had a very specific political meaning and significance. Palm leaves were used as markers of victory and celebration, victory after battle. 
And so what better way to recognize Jesus as the one who had recently brought back a man from the dead, as a leader and savior with the power to overthrow oppressors, than to wave those palms and proclaim, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord, blessings on the king of Israel. Esos rangos que solamente se mencionan en Juan representaban victoria y victoria y triunfo político. Y en este pasaje vemos como la multitud deseaba coronar a Jesús como su rey y salvador, aquel que conquistaría y vencería a los romanos para de nuevo establecer su propia nación, la nueva Jerusalén. No es difícil de entender por qué es que la gente deseaba esto. Después de pasar por tanto y de nuevo encontrarse como un pueblo ocupado por fuerzas que los oprimían y que demandaban lealtad a pesar de ser maltratados, la gente identificó a Jesús como un líder poderoso. Vieron en él a alguien que físicamente hacía cosas inexplicables, que alimentaba a las multitudes y que ministraba a los más necesitados y vulnerables. It is not a stretch to see why it is that the people were so ready to crown Jesus as their king. You see, Jesus was the one healing the sick. He was the one in on the ground floor feeding the hungry. He was the one standing with those that were being taken advantage of. He did and said things that nobody else did. And so on every front in their mind, he was the one who would charge on the empire and free them. It was he who would ride gallantly into the city and bring forth the revolution that he had been talking about with a mighty show of strength and power. And so we see how Jesus then chooses to meet this crowd and their expectations once again on his own terms, not on a noble and valiant steed but on a donkey and a young one at that. And in a way that conveys the true power and purpose of his ministry and how it would and has revolutionized the world in ways that they couldn't have possibly anticipated. Jesus decidió entrar a la ciudad sobre un pollino y demuestra su real propósito y poder a todos por medio de sus palabras y sus acciones. No solamente entra, no solamente está recibiendo alabanza de las multitudes, sino que está rompiendo todas las expectativas que todos tienen sobre él y sobre su rol. Pero el versículo que más me llamó la atención mientras preparaba este mensaje era la respuesta de los fariseos. Como en el versículo 19 se dice, miren, Todo el mundo se ha ido tras de él. While I was preparing this sermon, I kept coming back, and no matter how many times I kept trying to get away from it, verse 19 kept calling me back when the Pharisees said to one another, Look, the whole world is following him. You see, the people had early on tried to make Jesus their leader. After he had fed the 5,000 in chapter 6, verse 15, we see that Jesus has to withdraw from the crowds because the people were already showing signs of wanting to crown him and proclaim him as their king. We see how after Jesus healed Lazarus, the Pharisees and the chief priests had to call a council together, a meeting to discuss what to do about this Jesus, this one who had been doing many miraculous things and who was amassing a large following. We're told earlier in the gospel, in chapter 11, verse 48, that they say to themselves, if we let him go on like this, everyone will believe in him. Then the Romans will come and take away both our temple and our people. The whole world will follow him. Everyone will believe in him. What to the Pharisees seems like a problem and a threat is in fact a powerful proclamation of the power that Jesus had. What he did and what he said 
the ways in which he related to people, the ways in which he connected with others, the ways in which he challenged societal and religious norms, the ways in which he chose to love even those that would betray him were so different and unlike anything the world had ever seen before that it scared those that didn't understand what it was that he was truly doing. Todo el mundo se ha ido tras de él. En el capítulo 11, versículo 48, vemos como los fariseos de nuevo se reúnen y profesan en temor su preocupación de cómo la gente seguía a Jesús. Y se dicen, si lo dejamos seguir así, todos van a creer en él. Y los romanos vendrán y nos quitarán nuestro lugar y nuestra nación. Todo lo que Jesús hacía, la manera en que se acercaba a los que la sociedad rechazaba, la manera en que ministraba a los más necesitados, la manera en que rechazaba las normas sociales y religiosas, y como él alimentaba a los más hambrientos, no solamente físicamente, sino que también espiritualmente, era algo que nadie había visto y que para los que no comprendían su misión, representaba una amenaza a su manera de vivir, a su poder y a su estatus en la sociedad y en la comunidad. Por eso esas palabras que en ese entonces fueron dichas por sus propias inseguridades y deseos de mantener su poder y su rol entre la gente representan para nosotros hoy en día un recordatorio poderoso de cuán grande es ese poder de Jesús, que el mundo entero fue cambiado por la vida y por el ministerio de ese hombre. Look, look how the whole world follows him. These words that were said by those that didn't understand and that chose to see Jesus as a threat to their sense of power and their sense of authority in the world as they knew it, Remind us today of the true power of this man that we come to know as Jesus. Jesus did in fact change the world. For you see in his life and in his ministry, he healed the sick. He set captives free. He fed the hungry, both those that were physically hungry as well as those that were spiritually hungry. He dignified those that were marginalized and help them to reintegrate into their communities. His example and his actions left a mark on all who came to know him and has continued to change lives to this very day. On this Palm Sunday, we not only celebrate his triumphant entrance, but we remember that all that he did and all of who he was was not motivated by self-glory or by desires for political power or admiration or praise, no. Jesus served and loved because he was called to be the very embodiment of God's love for all on this earth. En este Domingo de Ramos, nosotros celebramos no solamente su entrada triunfal a Jerusalén, sino su vida, su ministerio y su amor por todos y cada uno de nosotros, como aquel que fue mandado a ser la encarnación del amor de Dios para todos en este mundo. Y nosotros, all of us, como sus discípulos, como sus seguidores, también somos llamados a ser ese amor encarnado de Dios para todos. No solamente para aquellos que nos caen bien, o los que nos sonríen cuando nos ven, sino el amor de Dios a nuestros enemigos, también a nuestros vecinos, pero también a aquellos que no piensan como nosotros, también el amor de Dios para aquellos que nos rechazan, aquellos que se oponen a nosotros, aquellos que se sienten solos, a los que están sufriendo, a los que son rechazados y marginalizados, a los que son discriminados. Nosotros, como discípulos de Cristo, somos llamados a ser el amor encarnado de Dios para todos. We call ourselves disciples of Christ. And as such, 
We are followers of Jesus, followers of the way, believers who have also been called to follow in his footsteps and to be that embodiment of that radical and inclusive love that covers all people, all things, all of creation. That radical and inclusive love that welcomes the stranger, that feeds the hungry, that stands with the oppressed, that fights for justice, that dignifies those that have been, feel, have been made to feel less than, that protects the most vulnerable, that dismantles patriarchy, racism, and all of the different isms that harm and divide us when God only longs for us to know love and freedom, to live and to thrive. Look, look, they said, look at how the whole world follows him. And on this Palm Sunday and every day, we should strive to be that embodiment of God's love so that more and more of the world will come to follow in Jesus' footsteps and come to know God's love and care. Todo el mundo se ha ido tras de él. Gloria a Dios en las alturas por eso. Seamos nosotros también instrumentos en las manos de Dios para que más y más personas lleguen a seguirlo y a conocer el amor y cuidado profundo de Dios para todos. Osana a Dios en las alturas. Bendito el que vino en el nombre del Señor. Hosanna and praise God. Blessed is the one who came in the name of the Lord. Thank God for the one who came for us all. Let us live as he did. Amen. Amen. In this moment, I'd like to once again invite all those who wish to make their confession of faith or to transfer their church membership to Down in Memorial Christian Church to come forward and formally be welcomed by myself as the pastor and by our presiding elder this morning and by the whole church. En este momento queremos de nuevo invitar a todo aquel que desea hacer su confesión de fe o de transferir su membresía a Downing Memorial Christian Church que pasen al frente para recibir la bendición y la bienvenida pastoral y de nuestros ancianos y de la congregación entera. As always, know that you are welcome here just as you are, and that we are glad to count you as a part of our community. Como siempre, deseamos que todos sepan que son bienvenidos en este lugar tal y como son, y que son una bendición tenerlos aquí con nosotros. There is no one, then we will transition into our welcome. Let us prepare our hearts now for communion. Jesus defies expectations in life and in death. He lived in a way that challenged the status quo and the powers that were to share with everyone the love and the freedom that could be with God's kingdom realized on earth. Jesus en su vida y hasta en su muerte rompió expectativas y normas. Su vida y su ministerio retaron el poder de aquel entonces de tal manera que muchos se sintieron amenazados por lo que él hacía y por lo que él predicaba. Sin embargo, todo lo que él hizo y todo lo que hacía era con la intención de compartir el amor y la libertad que Dios quiere que todos experimentemos todos los días. He knew that as he rode into Jerusalem, he would face some of his darkest and loneliest days. And even still, he found that little donkey and rode in willingly and bravely. This table, we remember this love and his commitment to sharing the good news of God's 
extravagant love for all. Recordamos en esta mesa de al comer y tomar de este pan y de esta copa su amor y su compromiso al llamado de Dios en su vida para compartir las buenas nuevas del amor extravagante de Dios para el mundo entero. Vengamos a la mesa. Vengamos a esta mesa de amor. Todos son bienvenidos. Let us come now and receive God's extravagant love in this meal together. Please join me in prayer. Almighty God, we give you thanks for the gifts of grace we have received from your hand. Thank you for this Palm Sunday, the beginning of Holy Week, the start of the journey towards the power of the cross, the victory of the resurrection, and ultimately in the knowledge that Jesus is our Savior and Redeemer. We ask that you bless these elements as we come this morning to share in communion together. We remember that this is the bread of life broken for us. And this is the cup of salvation. This is your love poured out for us. Through the bread and the cup, may we feel empowered to go forth to reflect your life and love, proclaiming the presence of your glory in our lives and in our world. In the powerful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Um, to prepare for the communion that we are going to take today, uh, we are going to sing the song Let Us Break Bread Together, and it is in the Child's Hymn number 425. Uh, para preparar para la comunión, vamos a cantar la canción De Rodillas Compartamos Hoy el Pan. <música> Let us break bread together on our knees. Let us break bread together on our knees. When I fall on my knees with my Oh, 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 
God's offered you their coats to walk on. They wave palm branches, honoring your presence. At this time, we come together to honor you. With our faithful offerings freely given, we bring these gifts before you, humble tokens of our love, and with grateful hearts to you, our Savior and Redeemer. May we continue to honor you every day with our prayers and praise, with our service and love, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. <laughs> for this week will be prayer group meets on Thursday, Tuesday, sorry, on Tuesday at 7 p.m. For any information, call Miriam. It's going to be through phone call. The group of adolescents se reúne el martes a las 7 p.m. por llamada telefónica. Por favor, para cualquier información que se comunique. El grupo de adoración se reunirá de la ley de SM en el santuario el sábado. Para cualquier información, comunique con la persona María de Cerro. Uh, prayer group is going to meet on Saturday at 2 p.m. This entry for any information, please contact me. Pastor. Our Good Friday service is set online through Zoom. It is the same Zoom link that we use to gather every Sunday that should have gone out to each of you through the newsletter. But if you need a reminder of what that is, we will be doing an e-blast through the week and I'll be also sending out a text message as well for those that need it that way so that we will be ready to connect. Nuestro servicio de Viernes Santo está listo para que todos nos conectemos por medio de Zoom. Ese, ese enlace para conectarnos es el mismo que, se, que usamos todos los domingos para nuestro servicio. Si no lo tienen o no recibieron es el canil de este mes, vamos a estar mandando un correo electrónico en la semana para mandar ese enlace y también por medio de texto si es que prefieren recibir ese enlace de esta manera. On Easter Sunday, we have several images here to remind us that if you would like to bring Easter lilies, please feel free to do that so that we might uh, have them displayed in honor of the people that you wish to honor on that Resurrection Sunday. Si desean traer los niños para el domingo de la Pascua, pueden traer esos niños este domingo. We will also are going to be placing flowers on our cross that we hope to be able to display in the week outside, as I know was the tradition, and I know it's an exciting thing that we hope to do now that we're able to be together in person again. We will be having flowers so that everybody can participate, but if you want to bring some from home, that is something we also want people to feel welcome to do. Estaremos compartiendo un momento juntos para poner flores en la cruz y así también demostrar esa cruz en la semana afuera de la iglesia como se acostumbraba antes de la pandemia. Vamos a tener flores que la iglesia tendrá para que cada persona pueda participar, pero hay algunas personas que desean traer flores de su casa, de su jardín, queremos que se sientan con esa libertad y si quieren traer sus flores de su, de su hogar, por favor háganlo para este domingo de Pascua. We will also be having an Easter egg hunt for children and family after worship on Easter Sunday. So please invite family and friends so that we all, children and adults together, can have fun outside hunting for Easter eggs. El domingo también tendremos una búsqueda de huevitos para los niños y los adultos. Así que por favor inviten a sus familiares, a sus vecinos, para que este día todos celebremos juntos el el que Dios y que Jesús resucitó, pero también que podemos compartir esa celebración juntos en familia. And finally, we have a potluck on that Sunday as well. And so we ask that you again connect with Domica and Caridad so that we can be ready to share our delicious meals and treats so that we can celebrate not just with celebration and joy, but also with giving food that Christ has risen and that we are on Easter feast. Amen. Ese domingo también tendremos potluck, así que comuníquese con Tomita y con Caridad para que así celebremos no solamente con actividades y con un servicio de, de gran gozo y de alabanza, sino que también podamos celebrar con alimentos y con deliciosos postres. Amén. 
Como siempre, todos tenemos la bienvenida. We are all welcome to Robinson Hall after service. Good morning again. Yeah, let's see today's clothing song, today's standard. The title is He is our piece. Let's see your song. Let's see.
ministry caused many to follow him, but also many to reject and oppose him. And yet through it all, he remained focused on his call to be the embodiment of God's extravagant and unlimited love for all. Yes, the cost was great, but he triumphed over death, and he continues to live and transform the lives of all who come to know him. La vida y el ministerio de Jesús causaron que muchos los lo siguieran, pero también que lo rechazaron. Y en cada momento se mantuvo enfocado en su llamado a ser el amor encarnado de Dios para el mundo entero. El precio fue grande, sí. Dio su vida entera. Pero él triunfó y venció la muerte para seguir transformando vidas. Pidamos de a Dios que nos ayude a como Jesús con nuestras vidas y nuestras acciones, ser el amor extravagante e invitado de Dios para todos y así inspirar al mundo entero a seguir los pasos de Jesús. Let us ask God to help us to like Jesus embody God's extravagant and unlimited love for all through our lives and through our daily actions so that we too might inspire all to follow in Jesus' footsteps. Let us go in peace and be God's peace everywhere that we go. Amen and amen. amen.